Hello everyone and welcome to yet another recreational programming session with Mr. Zozin. So today's quick offline session is going to be kind of a follow-up to the session that I posted yesterday, which is making memory save in my C, uh, because we kind of discovered something interesting after I posted the session. So essentially this session was about allocating memory for the stack of core routines, which are basically lightweight threads, and the uh, specifics of allocating memory for the call stack of basically anything is that the stack kind of grows down uh right so essentially you have some memory uh right and you allocate um some memory like this and usually you are not just allocating bytes you allocate in like a range of pages and pages are chunks of memory of four kilobytes right so we can actually kind of split this entire thing into like this sort of like chunks and stuff like that and uh the stack uh, grows towards zero right essentially when you allocated the memory you have to start your stack you have to start your call stack from uh, here and then as the cpu uh, pushes values onto the stack calls different functions and it executes the push instructions and stuff like that it's going to be actually uh, writing it to the left right so it is growing towards zero so and what's interesting is that uh, as soon as you go uh, here your stack is about to overflow and what people usually do they employ some sort of like a guard page uh, that looks like this and usually this guard page has uh, zero permissions right so it doesn't have any read or write or execute permissions so as soon as you try to touch this specific page your uh, application is going to sec fault rightfully so so uh, to allocate this kind of stack we employed a map cisco uh, with a very cool flag that i discovered uh, a couple of days ago which is called grows down so the gist of this flag is that it automatically creates this guard page for you you don't have to do anything special it creates that guard page for you and then under certain uh, conditions it may even automatically grow to the left for you right so if the conditions allow you after touching this guard page it becomes mapped you can use it so it automatically grows which is kind of cool right so we employ that and it actually works and stuff like that and then uh, somebody in the comments noticed a very interesting thing uh, I Federer 3 thank you so much right we when we allocate the memory right we know the pointer to this thing and when we are about to deallocate the memory for the stack, uh, we provide this pointer and this size of the memory to the unmap function, right? So the corresponding uh, function to unmap the map memory is monmap. And it requires the pointer to the start of the memory and the length of the memory. But if the memory grew due to touching guard page to the left, the pointer from which the memory starts and the size of the memory is basically invalidated how we are supposed to unallocate this kind of thing right so there's two obvious uh things that may happen if we just try to naively deallocate memory starting from here up until here either it is going to fail right so telling you that this is an invalid uh, address you can't really deallocate from here or the kernel is smart enough to realize that you marked a memory with grows to the left so by specifying this uh, pointer and this size you also mean all of the pages that grew to the left i checked that and neither of these situations are true <laughs> which is really funny uh, so we can actually take a look at that uh, we can actually take a look at that so here essentially i have a program that i wrote in the previous session uh first we print the path to the maps file which describes mapped memory pages right so let me actually uh, recompile the whole thing and also uh, run this entire stuff super quick so here is the path to the uh, description of the memory mapped pages of this specific process that we're currently running right so here it is so basically these are uh, ranges of the addresses and here are all of the mapped pages and stuff like that uh, right so then when i press enter when i press enter we are going to actually map 1024 pages right and then we're going to actually print the address where that thing starts and we're going to um, actually map them with uh the map stack and map grows down flags right so because we want to indicate that we're allocating memory for the stack so let's go ahead and actually press enter so here is the address of where this entire thing starts let's go back to the maps uh description and i'm going to revert this file 
and as you can see a new entry has been added right so and the, our address actually is part of this mapping so here is the mapping here is the thing that we just mapped uh one of the things we can do we can actually swap this entire thing around uh format it as hex values and put it into the python and we can confirm that we allocated this amount of bytes right so then we can actually divide this amount of byte by the size of the page which is 4096 and this is 124 pages right so this confirms that so the next thing uh we do in here the next thing we do in here we uh touch memory one byte before the start of the range that we just allocated we're trying to touch the guard page to trigger the growth of the vector so let's actually see what's going to happen um right so where is that okay okay touched your guard page so now we're going to go into here right so uh, look at this look at this range so here is the range if i just revert this file it's going to grow to the left right so it was actually six before now it's five so we grew it by one page by just touching the guard page so the stack grew to the left so what happened is exactly what we asked the operating system right we wanted a range of the memory with a guard page when you touch it it grows to the left so uh but i never actually tried to deallocate this entire thing so let's actually go ahead and do that uh let me kill the entire process i think the process is already killed so what we're going to be doing in here after that we're going to uh, just call uh, man, uh, man map. So here it is. I'm going to copy paste this entire thing. I'm going to provide the pointer that we uh, got from uh, a map, and the length that I want to provide in here is going to be 1024. 1024. So obviously this entire call may fail. Usually these kind of calls fail uh, when they return negative value, but we can actually double check this entire thing so this is going to be a result or i think it's return um yeah it returns negative value so that's totally fine so f printf std error and we're going to say something like error could not unmap um mapped memory something like that and we're going to exit with no zero exit code so after that i think we're going to wait a little bit more uh, right, so because if we die instantly, the file that contains the description of the memory is going to disappear automatically. We don't want that to happen, so we have to just wait for some input from the user. And to tell the user that we successfully unmapped the pages, I think we need to print something. Unmapped uh, the pages, right. Something like this. Okay, let's try to recompile this entire thing. It compiles successfully, all right. So here is the file. Uh, let's open this file. So here it is. I'm going to now map some pages. So the pages now start from this. I'm going to reword this entire thing. We got the new range. We got the new range. As you can see here, it starts with four. So we're going to touch the guard page. Okay, so we touch the guard page. This thing should now change to, five, uh, to three if I revert the buffer. It actually changed to three, as you can see. Cool. So now, the moment of truth. I'm going to unmap the whole thing but i also want to actually save this value right so i just gonna co copy paste it to my clipboard just in case okay error didn't happen it didn't error because we explicitly checked for the error so it successfully uh, unmapped the pages but did the range disappear from here i'm gonna rewrite the buffer no it didn't which is kind of interesting but notice how the right range actually changed so if we find the difference between these new addresses which is rather interesting so let's swap them around i'm going to put hex in here and i'm going to put it into python so now this range is exactly one page so what this motherfucker did is we tell it please unmap this range well what it did it just unmapped this range and all of the extra pages that got mapped, they just stayed there. <laughs> they, they just stayed there. So I absolutely love it. I didn't know that it works like that. So, and I guess it makes sense. Uh, because this is kind of the main difference between mmap and malloc. Malloc just allocates the amount of bytes you want, and then with free you are deallocated. Uh, mmap does exactly what it says. It maps the pages. Right, you say, okay, give me the uh, map this amount of pages. It just rounds up the addresses and just maps this exact amount of pages. So that means I can actually effectively ask it 
to just allocate the range and just unmap uh you know some pages in the middle with and, and have holes apparently this is how it works so essentially in our library when we finalize the state of our library and go through all of the uh, descriptions of the threads and delegate of their stacks there is a potential situation when some of the pages are not going to be unmapped so it's going to be a memory leak right and i was thinking what to do about that right because it's kind of difficult to keep track of these extra pages that got automatically created right so because uh the stack pointer is can be can go all over the place and you you can't keep track of it very easily and the only information we know is where we uh started the allocation right so but what's the maximum to the left like we, we never know and then i thought you know what that doesn't introduce any memory and safety does it right because the goal was to make the memory a little bit more safe and to do that we employed a guard page which if you touch it it's either going to sec fold or it's going to grow right just because we leaked a little bit of memory that doesn't deny the mechanism that we just employed in fact memory leaks by themselves are not memory unsafe they're not memory unsafe even by the rust standard believe it or not right so uh in rust i'm gonna open documentation rust up doc i think uh so here it is uh, where is my api so rest api documentation so in rust there is a special pointer called box and in the box there is a leak function right and look at that uh consumes and leaks the box returning a mutable reference and look at that it's absolutely safe it is absolutely safe leaking memory is not unsafe it is absolutely memory safe why because the main problem uh with memory allocation is use after free it's when you try to use a pointer which was free but what if you never free you're never gonna have a situation of use after free so that means leaking memory is totally safe right so you lose a little bit of a memory right so but touching that memory is totally valid thing so and furthermore in our library we um implemented an allocator that allows us to essentially reuse the stacks of already dead threads uh right so we don't like lose anything or or stuff like that so if we want to allocate a new thread we just see if we can reuse some of the memory uh, allocated by other dead threads so that's totally fine so because of that i think i'm gonna leave it as it is I th in fact i'm gonna actually not deallocate any memory when the library is finalized right so here we have some uh here we have some stuff i think yeah so i think when you call coroutine finish i'm not gonna even do any of that stuff I'm just i'm just gonna leave it as it is because why not why bother why even bother with any of that stuff right so because uh, we reuse that memory when we create threads and we uh it, all of the memory is going to be deallocated by the operating system anyway right so and it's going to make the code much simpler now we don't have to worry about keeping track of this like stack pointer whether it went outside of our stack base and how much many uh how much pages like new pages it created and stuff like that. it's a nightmare why why creating a program more complicated and potentially more unsafe so yeah so essentially what i'm going to do in here i'm just going to set all of these things to uh to zero i suppose in fact hmm so it's actually a little bit more complicated than that so we have a bunch of contexts right so which store the stack memory and stuff like that and we have arrays like active which store the indices within the context array of the active threads and we have dead uh, indices that can be reused when you allocate new threads and the threads that are currently polling and the uh, threads that are currently sleeping Th these two things are basically the same actually right so they are two parallel arrays that store associated information so essentially when we finalize the entire library i want to actually make all of the active uh threads inactive so to do that i think i need to just iterate through this entire thing uh and uh, for each active thing i'm gonna push it into the dead thing into the dead array so it can be then reused later so i'm gonna do di append uh, so dead 
active items i there we go so we push every active thread into a dead thread and then i invalidate basically clean up uh, the thread of all of the active things i want to do the same thing uh, for a sleep threads right so i'm going to replace uh, active with a sleep uh, like so and uh, then I also need to clean up the poles like this because a slip and pole are arrays that associated with each other. They're parallel arrays, their corresponding elements store related to each other information. So, and I guess that's about it, right? So that's the entirety of the cleanup I'm going to do in here. I'm not gonna even delegate anything. I'm just gonna mark all of the threads are as dead. So then uh, their stacks can be reused and I'm never gonna delegate it until the end of the application, uh, which is totally fine, right? So, I mean, so we have like tens of gigabytes of RAM these days. So if, if it's not going to work for you, just, just buy more RAM, just stop being poor. That's my advice for you. <laughs> I'm obviously joking, right? So we're uh, working on a pretty beefy machines, right? Where we can afford that. So I would not recommend using this library for embedded stuff, obviously, right? So, but I think for our use case, it's totally fine, right? So it just makes the logic a little bit simpler, uh, right? It, 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 get, it get, gets rid of extra head pain uh, or headache. And I'm sorry, I don't speak English. So anyway, that's everything I wanted to say about this uh, particular situation, all right? So thanks everyone who's watching right now. I really appreciate that. Have a good one and I see you all on the next recreation programming session with Ahu and Mr. Azuzu. I love you all. Uh, ah. Mwah.